If you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do, the cremator might not burn me alive. In this fight against the Combine, Mr. Freeman, the weapons you choose to fight with are the deciding factor in whether you win or lose. First off is the AK-47 or the AR-1. In the original leaked files, the 3D model of the rifle did not have any animations or hand models. What you see on screen is a little bit modified, but it is still true to the original idea. The gun could be fired in semi-auto, burst or full automatic firing modes. It is unknown which faction would have used this weapon, but I'm guessing the rebels would have had this as their primary firearm. Now I feel a bit off about this weapon. Looking at it, it always felt like an AK-47 did not belong in a Half-Life game. And not that I don't like the rifle, it's just that Half-Life 2 is supposed to be in the future, and an AK-47 seems very obsolete in terms of its age. They could have used something more modern, like an AK-103, 104 or 105, all manufactured around 2000, 2001. I'm guessing this rifle was cut because, well, there was already an assault rifle. The OICW or the AR-2. It was used by both the conscripts and Combine, and later on the Rebels would get them too. The rifle is based off of the XM-29 OICW. In the source code, this weapon is supposed to have a grenade launcher, but it is disabled. The grenade launcher ability was later shifted to the SMG by the time the files were leaked. There were two versions of this weapon. The earlier version on screen is more used up and dirty, while the later version had a cleaner texture. It is basically uncontrollable after five shots, so shooting it in bursts is more reliable. The thing is, I straight up do not like the look of this rifle. I mean, look at that scope. It is humongous. Something more sleeker in design would have been a better rifle than this. But anyway, some quick facts. The grenade model that the retail SMG shoots is named AR2 underscore grenade. AR2 like in this AR2 that we're looking at right now. And the reload animation for the pulse rifle in the retail game is the same as the one for AR2. The world model animation, not the player view model one. This rifle was most likely cut and replaced with the Combine Pulse Rifle we all know and love. The binoculars are well, binoculars. It zooms five times the normal player view sight and would have been used to locate and track radio signals. It was cut and replaced with the zoom function of the HEV suit and the crossbows scope zoom. The emulator was used by the cremator, first seen at the start of the game, used by the cremators to clean up the city. It was acquirable later on in the game and is extremely deadly. In the earlier stages of development, the emulator was only available to get from the cremator itself. Later on, the strider would have the emulator as a weapon and the player could kill it to get the weapon. What happened is that when the Combine Guard was cut, his warp cannon was given to the Strider and the Immolator remained only in the hands of the Cremator until the Cremator was cut too. It's an absolute beast of a weapon, puts enemies on fire and disintegrates them, presumably. Good thing this was cut because, man, this is too overpowered. Now having a flare gun in Half-Life 2 would have been unique. It is still present in the retail game, but it's not usable. In the cut version, the flare gun would have been found in the Arctic regions of the game and in the Borealis. 
It had two functions. One was to ignite the enemy on fire, and the second, I presume, is to light the way in dark areas of the game. I know Gordon has a flashlight in his suit, but I think there would have been a scene where the flare gun would have been the only choice to light the way. It doesn't do a lot of damage and the reload speed is kinda slow, but it would have been a cool weapon to have. Speaking of fire, the fire extinguisher was going to appear as a usable item. Its notable use would have been on the Borealis where Gordon would have used it to put out the flames to progress through the ship's narrow corridors. In the original leak, the extinguisher was functional but lacked the necessary animations and effects. What you see on screen is a bit modified. The Combine Guard Gun, or the Warp Cannon, is an absolute powerhouse of a weapon. Originally used by the Combine Guard, then by Gordon, it shoots a powerful beam that kills anything in one shot. Its primary use would have been against Striders. The beam can also hurt Gordon if he stands too close to the beam's blast radius. The world model and the player view model differed in the original leak. What you see here on screen, the player view model is modified to make it look like the world view model. Like the emulator, the combine guard gun is extremely overpowered. Good thing they cut this out after they cut out the guard himself. I would rather take down striders with RPGs and have the thrill rather than just point this beast at it and fire. The heavy machine gun, or the HMG-1, is a weapon based on the real-life GR-9. Although it was not that accurate, it was deadly and could take down a combine soldier in a few shots. It was also able to fire in either full auto or burst. I like this weapon and how it looks, apart from the texture that is. It has a weird color. So similar to how there are two assault rifles, AR-1 and AR-2, the AK and the OICW, the name HMG-1 implies that there would have been a HMG-2 as well. However, there are no files in the leak that would prove this implication true. The incendiary rifle or the eye rifle was a multi-shot flare gun. It would hold five flares per magazine. Although deadly, it had a really short range as the flares would quickly hit the ground after a few meters. The 3D model for this weapon was modified and recycled to be used as a combine pulse rifle. I find it really strange that a beefed up flare gun had this complex of a 3D model, but this does really look like something the Combine would use as a machine gun rather than a flare gun. Not much to say here, it functions similar to the flare gun, only difference being that you can fire 5 flares in succession. The missile launcher is the predecessor to the RPG in the retail game. Apart from how it looks, there isn't much of a difference. Its appearance, however, is based on the real-life FIM-92 Stinger. The MP5K, or the SMG-1, is my favorite weapon from the beta. This is the only weapon that I wish that wasn't cut from the game. Both the MP5K and the MP7 were in Half-Life 2 during development, but unfortunately, the MP5K was cut in favor of the MP7. Although it is more slow in firing than the MP7, it is much more accurate. I don't know what it is about the MP5K's appearance in the beta that just gets me. Maybe it's the design. To me it feels like something that would be used by an oppressive regime of the consoles. Continuing off of the SMG-1, the SMG-2 was the MP7 that remained in the retail game. 
It's only being featured here because the original player view model was different than that of the retail one. When the leak happened in 2003, the SMG2 had the same retail model we all know, but judging from the HUD texture leaks, the weapon was supposed to look different. The weapon you see on screen is a fan-made one, I guess, made to replicate the look of the SMG2 that was originally in the game in the earlier stages of development. This weapon got modified into the retail version and the rest is history. It's more fast firing than the MP5K but has poor accuracy and damage. Now this big guy was based on the LAR Grizzly Big Boar 50 BMG rifle. The sniper rifle was supposed to be Half-Life 2's long-range weapon, but it was dropped in favor of the crossbow when going into retail. Weirdly, it is supposed to be extremely powerful, killing soldiers in one hit, but in the beta that I have, it takes around two or three shots to kill an enemy. I have no idea what's going on here, why it's doing that. Like the crossbow, the sniper would have to be reloaded after each shot. It was a prominent weapon in the Street War chapters, being used by the Combine sniper in the building, and was going to be used by the original Combine camouflage elite soldiers. Its crosshair feels strange, a bit large if I'm honest. It's a good weapon, but the crossbow is a classic one and it's good that it was kept instead of the sniper. The Tau Cannon or the Goss Gun was a usable weapon in Half-Life 1. It was planned to make a return in Half-Life 2, but it was cut. Well, almost cut. It is present in Half-Life 2, but it's mounted on the scout car. Sometime during development, the Tau Cannon could have been dismountable and used separately. But they stuck to the mounted option, and in the text files of Half-Life 2, the retail one, it is implied that the Vortigons would have been able to use the Tau Cannon. Like the one from Half-Life 1, the Tau Gun is extremely powerful and can kill any type of enemy very easily. But I think like the Immolator and the Guard Gun, the Tau Cannon was a bit too overpowered and therefore removed. Now the most influential weapon gun or item of them all. The physics gun or the fizz gun. The weapon was created to assist Gordon in solving puzzles that would have required messing around with physical objects. It also had a beam that would kill enemies. Once upon a time a man by the name of Gary Newman was playing Half-Life 2. Well, the Half-Life 2 Beta League with his friends a long time ago. Messing around with the Fizz Gun, he had an idea. You probably heard of it. Gary's Mod. The Fizz Gun is the most important tool in Gary's Mod, and this weapon is its direct predecessor. The Fizz Gun in the Beta works similar to the one in G Mod, apart from the ability to rotate or freeze objects. There's no particular reason as to why the fizz gun was cut, but it was cut and the idea evolved into what we know today as the gravity gun. Selectable Lightweight Attack Munition, or SLAM, is a small explosive device that can be used like the satchel charges from Half-Life 1. It was originally intended to be a weapon in Half-Life 2, but was cut. The hop wire grenade is a polyhedral sphere with multiple holes in it. When thrown, it would leap into the air and shoot several wires in all directions. These wires would attach themselves to the surrounding, and if anyone trips over them, the explosives go off. 
these would have been most likely used by the Combine Assassin and later on by Gordon. Additionally, in the source code of the beta, it is implied that this weapon was also going to be used against the Striders, similar to how the Magnuson device is used in episode 2. I gotta say, this is one of the coolest weapons that was cut. I love the way how it jumps into the air and shoots the wires. When they added in the gravity gun, another weapon was made redundant, the brick bat. This weapon would have allowed Gordon to pick up common items from the ground and throw it at the enemy. The damage it would do would depend on the velocity of the object being thrown at. These items included rocks, cremator heads, beer bottles and fast head crabs. Citizens were also able to use the brick bed as seen in the rooftops map. The Molotov was also going to be a part of the brick bat weapon but it was cut. It functions as how you would expect it to, you throw it and watch everything go up in flames. I have no idea why this was cut, probably because they removed the whole brick bat concept. The ice axe was a melee weapon that functioned like the crowbar, it was more faster but did less damage than the crowbar. When the Borealis chapter was cut, the ice axe was cut along with it. Similarly, the stun baton is a melee weapon that was semi-cut from the game. It is still in the retail game but cannot be used by Gordon. And lastly, there's the socket wrench. It was planned to be Alex's iconic melee weapon like Gordon's crowbar but the idea was dropped. Instead, they gave her a unique weapon. We all know it as Alex's gun. And there you have it. The cut weapons of Half-Life 2. There were a few more but they were only ideas and had no tangible assets that I can show you. Looking at all these weapons, I think the original planned arsenal was a bit too much for the game. It just had too many weapons, honestly. I think it's good that they cut back on the weapons. My only complaint would be that they should have kept the MP5K and removed the MP7. But oh well, I guess you can't have everything. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.